Hi there, this is Dr. Anna Maria Helt, herbalist and microbiologist with Bosmati.com, and our herb of the week is bilberry. Vaccinium myrtillus is the botanical name, and vaccinium is the same genus that also has fruits like blueberry in it, to which bilberry is closely related, and also huckleberry and cranberry is also related to bilberry, and so it's a really delicious dark colored berry. I don't know if you can see that purplish red color there. This is a bilberry extract I have going. Maybe you see a little bit better here. Uh, so I use this fairly heavily in my little practice here in Colorado. Uh, so uh, delicious berry as are blueberries and other members of this genus and also a very nutrient rich berry. So bilberries are rich in things like beta carotene, uh, which is a vitamin A precursor. Bilberries have vitamin B1, vitamin B2, uh, the antioxidants, vitamin C and vitamin E, which actually work really well together as a pair. Uh, bilberries also contain vitamin K, which is involved in blood clotting. And then not to be left behind, there are quite a few minerals that are prevalent in bilberry, including iron and manganese and zinc and chromium. And chromium is an interesting one because chromium is used for blood sugar regulation. And one of the uses of bilberries is in fact for healthy blood sugar regulation. And it has traditionally been used for disorders such as diabetes. Um, but back to some of the basics, uh, bilberries are highly antioxidant, as are blueberries and other related berries. And in terms of bilberries, this is due in part not only to the vitamins that I mentioned, but also to its dark pigment, the anthocyanins and other pigments that are found in the berries. Bilberries are also strongly anti-inflammatory, and it's these properties that contribute to a lot of bilberries' medicinal benefits in the body. Um, aside from blood sugar regulation, bilberries are also a wonderful blood vessel tonic. And so they are used traditionally for things like uh, artery health, um, when, especially when people are starting to develop blocked arteries, um, angina, which is chest pain due to ar arterial blockage. Bilberry is used as a vein tonic, and so it's something you could consider if you have a history of varicose veins. It's not going to make the current ones go away, but it might help strengthen your blood vessels in your legs to reduce further development. Um, bilberries are great um, as a capillary tonic. So if you tend to bruise really easily or get spider veins really easily, uh, which are actually capillaries, uh, bilberry is your plant. And so I really like it uh, for eye health, and this is one of the other traditional uses. And part of the benefits bilberry has for vision and eye health is due to the effect on those very delicate capillaries in our eyes. So bilberry, um, through its uh, promotion of blood flow as well, can support eye health. But it, it's probably also likely due to the antioxidants as well. And their effect not only on the eye blood vessels, but likely elsewhere in the eye. And so I frequently use bilberry in formulas for eye health. I've used it personally when my eye pressure started going up. Um, there's glaucoma in my background. And so I will use bilberry to, um, to decrease that eye pressure together with other herbs that are known from research and tradition to help with that. I use bilberry for myself and clients who deal with dry eyes, and it really helps in that regard. And it's used for a whole range of issues that people deal with with their eyes. Improving night vision is another example there. Um, so bilberry is also useful for cognition. And again, part of that is going to come from the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory qualities of this berry, but also probably through the circulation benefits and the promotion of blood vessel health in the brain. So I use this for a client who had a history of hemorrhagic stroke, and it's being used basically as a preventative to help strengthen the blood vessels in his brains in his brain <laughs> and to help promote good blood flow in his brain along with the other treatments that he is undergoing. Bilberries are also great for kidney health. And again, I kind of wonder how much of that is from direct anti-inflammatory and antioxidant activity on the kidneys by the berries and how much of that is related to the support of, again, the very small, delicate blood vessels that we have in the kidneys. And so this is a, a really useful uh, food, 
slash medicine to have on hand. It is delicious. And it's likely that a lot of these qualities you could also find in very dark colored blueberries, very dark colored huckleberries. So if you don't happen to have bilberries available to you, you can try some of its cousins as well. Um, I do like to use bilberries though. They are very dark. It is easy to get them online, um, organically grown if you aren't growing it yourself. But you know, go to the store and grab your local blueberries as well. Uh, they might not be local, but you can get some blueberries and use them somewhat similarly. How much overlap uh, blueberries and bilberries have um, in terms of all of these uses, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to guess that there is a lot of overlap. We do know that blueberries themselves are useful for healthy blood sugar regulation, for instance. We know that blueberries themselves are useful for uh, inflammation and as an antioxidant and for healthy hearts and such. So I'm gonna guess there is a lot of overlap there if you wanted to play around with substituting some of Bilberry's cousins in. And so uh, until next week, be well.